many had scoffed at the fact that James Bond was going to be played by a blonde man of average height. But Daniel Craig proved his detractors wrong, seeing as Casino Royale is a real contender for the title of being the best Bond movie of them all. I'm Stephen Archibald and welcome to my movie podcast. valued listener and welcome to they came from within cult movie reviews you know his name casino royale 2006 the eon producers barbara broccoli and michael g wilson were clearly stung by much of the criticism which die another day had received they were determined their next bond movie would be tougher harder and that it would keep fancy gadgetry and CGI effects to a bare minimum. The bold decision was made to not just reboot the franchise but to more or less reset it. Casino Royale 2006 was going to be an origin story which is rather apt seeing as it's based on Ian Fleming's first 007 novel we get to see how James Bond obtains his double O license and how he strives to adjust to a job in which he can and must kill to save his country in particular and the world in general. Even in the first movie, Dr. No from 1962, Bond was already a seasoned pro. It's claimed that around 200 actors were on the list for replacing Pierce Brosnan as James Bond. Brosnan having quit the role in February 2004. Actors such as Goran Viznich, Carl Urban, Dougry Scott and Sam Worthing were high up on this list, as was a certain Henry Cavill. The future Superman and Witcher star was only 22 at the time. This casting process probably wasn't even necessary. Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson had already set their sights on Daniel Craig as Brosnan's replacement, ever since seeing him in the 2004 crime movie, Layer Cake. Barbara, Michael and MGM told Craig he had secured the part in May 2005. He wasn't officially announced as the new James Bond until the 14th of October 2005. Not many of us have a high opinion of bankers, but the one who serves as the lead villain in this fabulous movie is truly wicked. Le Chiffre, who is played by the brilliant Danish actor Mads Mikkelsen, is a banker who deals with terrorists. A means is required for MI6 to infiltrate Le Chiffre's inner circle. Bond just happens to be an expert poker player. So, when Le Chiffre stages a poker tournament at the Casino Royale in Montenegro, it's 007 who gets assigned to attend. Bond is accompanied on this task by the British Treasury agent Vesper Lind, who's portrayed by the gorgeous French actress Ava Green. Vesper's responsible for giving Bond the $10 million required for entering the poker tournament. With danger all around them, Bond falls heavily for Vespa, but it proves to be a love which will come at an exorbitant price. Charlize Theron, Angelina Jolie and Cécile de France were among the striking actresses considered for the role of Vespa Lind. In the end, it was said to be a toss-up between Ava Green and Olivia Wilde with Ava of course winning and she was picked quite late seeing as filming 
had already commenced. As you have no doubt already gathered, Ava's a profoundly attractive woman. She could easily pass for being the love child of Alain Delon and Charlotte Rampling. Ava made a dazzling big screen debut in Bernardo Bertolucci's The Dreamers in 2003. Prior to Casino Royale, Ava was considered for the key female role in The Constant Gardener. That part went to the lovely Rachel Weisz, who would win an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress, and she would go on to marry Daniel Craig in 2011. The Constant Gardener's star, Ray Fiennes, would eventually go on to play Bond's boss M. Ava's mother is the actress Marlene Jobert, and she is cousins with the actress Josephine Jobert, who's best known for playing Detective Sergeant Florence Cassell in Death in Paradise. Casino Royale's theme song, You Know My Name, was written and performed by Chris Cornell, the legendary frontman of Soundgarden and Audio Slave. Sadly, Chris took his own life on the 18th of May, 2017. He was 52 years old. Martin Campbell's movie has several fine set pieces and it gets off to a cracking start with Bond chasing a terrorist called Molica through a construction site in Madagascar. We discover very early just how tough Craig's interpretation of 007 will be. He's so hard we get to see him smash through a wall. Molica was played by the parkour genius Sebastian Fokan. The ever reliable Jeffrey Wright portrays the CIA man Felix Leiter. He's the first black actor to play Bond's American buddy in an official Bond movie. Bernie Casey was the first to do so in the unofficial Bond film Never Say Never Again in 1983. Returning to the multi-award winning Mads Mikkelsen he had landed the role of the Shifra with considerable ease. So much so that Daniel Craig jokingly asked him if he had to sleep with someone to get the part. Mads Bond villain is easily one of the best, having the character suffer from hemolacria and therefore able to eat blood was a great touch. It is genuinely disturbing when he does so. One of the Bond franchises toughest ever scenes is in this movie when Bond gets tied to a chair and is tortured by Le Chiffre. What's ironic is that Mickelson appeared in another movie that year a Swedish drama called Next in which he was tied to a chair and tortured. Subtle hints are dropped about the movie's tragic outcome. In the title credits we see an animated playing card which carries Vespaline's face, surrounded by a heart and a spade. The Queen of Hearts symbolizes love, whereas the Queen of Spades symbolizes bad luck. And there's a clever Shakespearean touch during the melancholic shower scene, when Vesper says, there's all this blood on my hands, it's not coming off. This is a clear reference to Lady Macbeth, who commits suicide through guilt. Quentin Tarantino was greatly interested in this project at one stage. I dearly wish that it would have been possible for his version to have been made at the same time as this one. Pierce Brosnan would have retained the Bond role, Uma Thurman would have been Vespa and Samuel L. Jackson would have played Felix Leiter and it is thought that it would have been set in the 1960s, not far off the time period of Ian Fleming's 1953 novel. Daniel Craig was the first actor to receive a BAFTA nomination for playing James Bond, and Ava Green was actually awarded a BAFTA for Rising Star. I can't believe 
that I have gone through a whole review of Casino Royale without once mentioning the iconic sequence in which a hunky Daniel Craig arises from the sea. Oh, I just have. Oh well. Casino Royale made $616 million from a budget of $150 million. It was released in the UK on the 16th of November 2006 and got its US release the following day. Oh, and filming took place between the 3rd of January and the 20th of July 2006. Despite being heavily influenced by The Bourne Identity and Batman Begins, Casino Royale has its own distinctive, rather beautiful voice. I'm Stephen Archibald, and thank you very much for listening to my podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Movie Reviews. Look after your good self, and bye-bye for now.